Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here to chat with you about linear combinations and span of vectors. We're going to begin in two-dimensional space and focus on explaining the basics in 2D and 3D space in the video, though a lot of what we cover will apply to spaces that are a higher number of dimensions. But for now, let's start in 2D space, or what is sometimes called R2. So everybody, this is R2. R2, this is everybody. We can think of R2 as our xy plane from basic algebra. We should know how to scale a vector from our last video, multiply the vector by a real number in this case. I've got a vector v, which is the vector 3, 2. I've also written it in its column vector form, and I've graphed it in R2 as well. So our question over here asks us, is it possible to scale this vector so that it points to the point 9 comma negative 8. Remember that scaling a vector is like stretching it or shrinking it, but it should still have the same direction or the exact opposite direction once we scale it. So if we run through some possibilities, 2 times vector v will point in the same direction but just be twice as long. Scaling vector v by a factor of 3 again just makes it longer still in the same direction. Using a negative multiple of vector v gives us a vector that points in the opposite direction and changing to any negative scalar only changes its length in that opposite direction. So I think we would all agree that no, there's no way to scale vector v so that it points to 9 comma negative 8. The reason being that the vector 9 comma negative 8 is not a multiple of the vector 3 comma 2. We can't multiply 3 comma 2 by any real number and get 9 comma negative 8. If we want to talk about all possible scalar multiples of this vector v, then we have a notation that looks like it reads span v with our vector v here in curly brackets. We call this the span of v, or the subset of R2 spanned by v, and it's the line in R2 through the origin that is in the direction of vector v. We want to make a brief mention that the zero vector, the vector that is zero times vector v, in other words the vector zero comma zero, also fits on this line since it starts at the origin and goes nowhere. Let's take a look at a different vector now. Here we've got a new vector w that is one comma negative four, and I think we can look at this image here and answer the question pretty easily, which of the following is in the span of vector w. We can even label these just in case, but if we extend a line forever forward and backward in the direction of vector w, we can see that the vector negative 2 comma 8 is in the span of w, but the other vector 9 comma negative 8 is not. You might have been able to tell without this picture since this vector in the span of w here is actually negative 2 times vector w. So our lonely vector down here, 9 comma negative 8, has been neither in the span of v nor in the span of w so far. But now what if we try to use some combination of traveling vector v and traveling vector w to arrive where the vector 9 comma negative 8 takes us from the origin? And this is the idea of the span of two vectors, v and w. That is, the set of all vectors that can be made by adding any scalar multiple of v with any scalar multiple of vector w. If we write this down, it looks like some multiple of v plus some multiple of w. And this is what we call a linear combination of vectors v and w. So we want to see if we can find a way to add some multiples of v and some multiples of w to get 9, negative 8. The trick is to figure out if there are these c1 and c2 values that make it work, right? If we try to figure out answers for c1 and c2, we might first think about distributing the scalars into these vectors on the left side of the equation. And then for vector addition, we know that we can add the entries that are in the same spots in each vector, giving us something with only one vector on each side of the equal sign. And then if we think about the entries in the same places being equal on both sides, this gives us a system of equations with C1 and C2 in it. 
Now if we try to solve this system using row reduction, so I'm going to go ahead and set up my augmented matrix for the system. My first row will read 3, 1, 9. My next row, 2, negative 4, negative 8. I'm going to go ahead and make a choice here at the beginning of my row reduction. Maybe not everybody would make it, but I have a 3 here, and if I want to make that a 1, let's say in my row reduction, I would need to divide row 1 by 3. That would give me a 1 -third there, and maybe I don't want a fraction. So I'm going to go ahead and swap rows 1 and 2. And the reason for that is I do notice that row 2, we have a common factor of 2 in each of these entries. So I'm going to go ahead and swap those. And then I'm going to, once I have that, I'm going to divide that row by that common factor. And so now that I have this, I'm going to go ahead and say that row 1, we're going to make that row 1 divided by 2, or multiplied by a half if you prefer. And if we do that, we'll get 1, negative 2, negative 4. So that 1 makes reducing the other row a bit easier, the 3, 1, 9 here. And now I need to make a 0 here out of this 3. I will need to subtract 3 copies of row 1 to do that. So we're going to make row 2. We're going to change. And that's going to be row 2 minus 3 copies of row 1. If we do that here, then 3 minus 3 times 1 would be 0. 1 minus 3 times negative 2 would be like plus 6, so we'll get a 7 here. 9 minus 3 copies of row 1, so negative 3 times negative 4 would be a 12, so we'd actually get 21 here. Of course, we're only changing row 2, so row 1 stays the same. Now from here we could row reduce further, but I'm going to go ahead and stop here. I think we have enough to see what's going on. So here, this row now says that 7 times C2 is equal to 21. And so dividing both sides would tell me that C2, the solution for that is 3. And now if I take that C2 value of 3 and use it in this row, this says C1 minus 2C2, but we already know that C2 is 3, equals negative 4. So we get that C1 minus 6 is equal to negative 4, and adding 6 to both sides, of course, tells us that C1 is equal to 2. So we get a solution of C1 equals 2, and C2 equals 3. So we know the scalar multiples of each vector, v and w, that we need to add those together to give us 9, negative 8. So we found that 2 times vector v plus 3 times vector w gives us a result of 9, negative 8. We can show this visually by putting two copies of v end to end, and at that point continue with the path that w gives us three times in a row. And we see that we arrive at the same endpoint as the vector 9, negative 8. So a linear combination of vectors is a sum of a collection of vectors, each with a coefficient, which when it comes to vectors, we call the coefficients scalar multiples. Sometimes we also call them the weight of that vector in the linear combination. Here are some examples of linear combinations of vectors. So the first one here is four copies of vector 1, v1, plus seven copies of vector 2. The next one says six copies of vector 1 minus three copies of vector 2 minus one copy of vector 3. Remember that the minus is the same as adding a negative number of that vector. This last one here, if you look at it, you might notice that it looks like we're missing something. There's no v4 term. And so if we assume our collection had five vectors, we don't know that for sure. But if we assume that to be the case in this one, then this linear combination is a one copy of vector 1, plus five copies of vector 2, plus a copy of vector 3, plus no copies of vector 4, minus two copies of vector 5. And we can see that some of our scalars, our c values, could be zero in a linear combination.
when we have a vector in 2D space, as we saw earlier, the span of that vector gives us a line in R2. Similarly, a vector in 3D space, or what we call R3, will have a span that is a line traveling through 3D space. When we consider the span of two vectors, if the pair of vectors are non-parallel, then those vectors define a plane. So for these vectors v1 and v2 here, you can see that they are non-parallel since they're not multiples of one another. And the span of v1 and v2 together is the entire xy plane, or r2. We'll go ahead and point out that if these two vectors were parallel, they would just define the same line in space with their span. If we look at these two vectors, each with three entries, then these two vectors define a plane in 3D space, or R3. That plane will contain the origin, and these two vectors will also lie in that plane. All right, everyone, thanks for hanging out to talk about linear combinations and span of vectors. We'll see you in the next video.